I'm Simon Rapkin. I'm a professor of medicine and cardiology at the University of British Columbia. And I've been speaking uh, here at the international meeting uh, in my hometown about uh, the QT interval and specifically how we should abandon the old uh, hundred year old uh, methodology that adjusted the QT interval for heart rate and instead use a brand new method that is much more precise, much more accurate, and uh, contributes more uh, information about uh, QT intervals. QT interval measurement uh, is essential in the diagnosis of some drug-induced uh, arrhythmias and identifying electrolyte abnormalities and identifying the impact of different kinds of drugs on the heart. Uh, traditionally, uh, the QT interval has been adjusted by two kinds of formulas named after uh, men in the 1920s who published articles that the QT should be adjusted by either the square root of the heart rate or the cube root of the heart rate. And when they did that, they really didn't have good scientific data to make that kind of conclusion. The first uh, individual, Bassett, did it because he believed that that was an ana analog of uh, mechanical systole. Uh, the second individual, Frederica, uh, had a much more precise uh, evaluation of the heart rate QT uh, interval relationship, but reduced it to the cubed root. But that really doesn't uh, adjust for the fact that the QT heart rate relationship may change over heart rate, so that it might be one thing at a low heart rate and another thing at a higher heart rate. So what we did is we looked at the heart rate QT interval in the large population of N. Haynes, which is a survey conducted in the US, which is representative of the US adult population. And we took that data, looked at the relationship between QT interval and heart rate, and then did some more sophisticated mathematical methodology for it. Specifically, we took a, a spline fit uh, of that particular data with four knots so that it was able to look at uh, the relationship at certain different heart rates. It came up with a new equation for it and then uh, looked at how good that particular equation was according to some of the older uh, kinds of measurements for adjusting the QT interval for heart rate. And we found that the new spline uh, formulation was much more precise. It was much less dependent on heart rate than the Bazet, it was much less dependent on heart rate than the Frederica formula, and was much better than a number of other formulas. After we did that, we did a couple other things. First, we decided to look at a real way of defining normal, and we defined normal by percentiles. So we d adjusted uh, and calculated and came up with each percentile ranking for an individual with their QT interval. And then after that, we did it by age, and we fit equations to de define the age and the QT interval. And afterwards, we did it for sex as well. So we were able to define a relationship for an adjusted QT on the basis of a spline correction that took into account age as well as sex and looked at it from a percentile point of view. So with our new approach, basically what we can do is if uh, an in, a cardiologist uh, wants to find out what the adjusted QT interval is, one can plug in the patient's age, their sex, their QT interval, and their heart rate, and the formula which is on the net can come up with the actual corrected QT, its percentile, and its percentile for age and for sex. So one can now know 
what the normal should be, what ranking the individual has, and we can do it much more precisely, and we can do it almost independently of heart rate. 